Hi everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to make a table of contents easily and quickly using Microsoft Word. Most of the time I have seen students in the university, colleges or schools need to do the assessments and they have a struggle of how to make the table of contents quickly using Microsoft Word. Instead, some of the students using try to do it using manually, but they have some issues of the alignments or the page numbers. So in order to avoid all these, I'm going to show you some simple steps that you need to follow in order to make your table of contents. First of all, you need to have Microsoft Word installed in your computer. Once you have the Microsoft Word, open a new document. Once you open the new document, let's say that you are going to make your assessment. Mainly, your first page is the title page. So, most of the students, you have to do uh, write your student ID or maybe assessment title or maybe the subject name on the first page. And once you finish your first page, your second page mostly would be the table of contents if it is a normal assessment. I'm not talking about dissertation or PhD thesis. If it's a general normal assessment, second page mostly would be the table of contents. So in order to jump to the next page, how, what actually I'm doing, click insert, click page break. Whenever you do insert page break, you will go to the next page without actually changing any formatting. So let's say this is the table of contents page, but we are not going to consider the table of contents. Now, the reason we have to do the table of contents once we finish our assessment. So I'm going to keep the table of contents page over here. And again, I'm going to jump to the next page. That page is introduction. Now, this is where you have to follow the trick. So, the tip number one. Now, introduction, I need to show it on my table of contents. At the end, introduction and the page number need to be on my table of contents. What I have to do is, if you click home menu, you can see there are styles. Look, normal, no space, heading one, heading two, title. Always, if you want to make a table of contents, you are whatever that contents need to be in heading format. Otherwise, you won't be able to create the automated table of contents. Right now, you can see it is in the normal. Normal is the whatever you write in. I'm going to click heading number one. Then I'm going to type introduction. You can see when I type introduction, it show up in the blue color. So that doesn't matter. You can, if you want, you can change this color using the font color. Or you can leave it. Now, when, whenever you write using the heading, look, Click enter. It will automatically jump to normal. So you do not need to worry about anything. Only thing you have to do once you type introduction or whatever the heading that you need to put it into the table of contents. Just that need to be under heading one. Then click enter. Then it will automatically jump to the normal. So let's say you... You may have written your table of, sorry, the introduction like twice. And then I want to go to the next page, insert page break. So the next page, the next topic would be maybe literature review. Now I want that literature review heading in my table of contents. So what I'm going to do again, heading number one, I'm going to add the heading number one. Literature review. So, this literature review need to be in my 
table of contents. That's why I want to put this one as a heading one format. Heading one is like a main theme. Heading two is something under main theme. Now, as you all know, whenever you press enter, it goes back to the normal. Mostly in the literature review, you may have some general contents, isn't it? So you may have written some general contents. You have a lot of different, different themes or topics or different headings, isn't it? Now, this is the literature review, the main one. Then I need to make a, some topic area. So I want to discuss some topic areas, right? So whenever I want to do it, now you don't need to put the heading one because the heading one is the main heading. Now I can add another heading as heading two. Heading two, I can simply write something, let's say digital banking. Digital banking. Sorry. Right. Once I do this digital banking, click enter on your uh, keypad, then it will jump to normal. You can see it here. You can write something. Yeah. So let's say I'm not going to type any like a contents wise, the qualitative things. However, you can type whatever you want to write in the digital banking. Now, under digital banking, I want to make another topic. That topic may be internet banking. Internet banking is part of digital banking. So I'm going to add the next heading as heading number three. This is like a hierarchy, right? So the heading number three, I'm going to put internet banking. Internet banking. So, you can see when I press enter, it goes back to the normal. So, literally, literature review is under heading 1, digital banking is under heading 2, internet banking is under heading 3. You will see how it looks like whenever we create the table of contents. So, you may write whatever the contents you want to write in this particular section. There may be another uh, subheading under digital banking. You can use heading number three. So what are the other types you can find in the digital banking? So one is internet banking. One may be automated teller machine, isn't it? Automated teller machine or other word we called as ATM. So this may be another subheading under digital banking. That's why I put it as heading number three. Now again, you can enter. Whenever you click enter, it goes back to the normal. So you can start typing. Um, there may be another subheading under digital banking. So again, heading number three, it may be mobile banking. Press enter, it goes back to the normal and you can start typing whatever you want to type on the mobile banking. So what's now going to be happen? Let's say we have finalized our literature review. I want to jump to the next main heading. So insert page break. So the next main heading would be heading number one. I would say conclusion. This is the next main heading. Press enter and then you can type the conclusion as you wish. Usually the last page in any assessment would be references. If you have done referencing, then you have to add the reference list at the end. So I'm going to go to the next page, insert page break. And again, I'm going back to the home main menu and references again need to be under heading one. So I'm going to type references like this.
So I'm not going to add anything over here because I haven't added any references. So this is the usual structure or format of a normal essay or assessment format, right? Now, let's say we have finished our assessment. Once we finish our assessment, what we have to do is we have to add the table of contents. So this is just an imagination. I have done your uh, assessment and I have completed it and now I want to add the table of contents. Before I do that I would show you one more thing then you can easily find out actually this whatever I'm talking actually the page numbers. I'm going to add the page numbers as well. So how you can add the page numbers to your assessment? Click insert page numbers. Insert page numbers when you click the page numbers you can actually decide where you want to put your page number so I like to put middle of the bottom so also there is a one more uh, thing you have to understand most of the time people do not like to put the title page or the first page with the page number if you want to remove the page number, you can click this option, different first page. If you tick this, you will not see the first page, page number. You can see it over here. It start with the page number two. So once you do that, so we have done our page numbers. Now where the trick comes. How are we going to add this table of contents? Here I have just written to show you this is the page I have allocated. I don't need this. How we have to now add the table of contents? Click references in the menu. You can see home, insert, design, layout, references. Click references. In this references menu, you have to only focus on the most left hand side options which shows as table of contents. Click this down arrow of table of contents. When you click the down arrow, you can see the different designs. So I personally prefer to use the middle design with the table of contents. When you click, you would see your table of contents has been generated automatically using, I think, maximum three clicks. So. Table of contents, you can see introduction was in under heading number one. Literature review again was in the heading number one. Digital banking, you can see there is a little space or intent, isn't it? So this was under heading number two. Then internet banking, we put it as the heading number three. Now you can see again there is a space. So this is actually why I use the heading one, two, three. If you use all the time the heading one, you don't see it like hierarchy. So you will see everything like introduction, literature review, digital banking in the same line. So in order to differentiate these topics, so you can use the heading number one, heading number two, heading number three, likewise. Now look, you can see the page numbers as well. Introduction is in the page number three. Look, introduction is in the page number three. Let's say you have finished your thesis or assessment. However, you want to add some different, different things over here. You have missed something. Let's say you want to add something somewhere in your literature review. If you want to add something in the literature review, let's imagine our mobile banking going to jump to the next page. Okay, let's imagine. Now the mobile banking is in the page number five. If you look at your table of contents, the mobile banking was in the page number four. Now, how you can sort this? So one may say we have to manually edit it. No, you don't need to do that. Or some students, they what they do is they delete the full table of contents. They again go to references and then they again make the table of contents. You don't need to do that. Once 
you do any changes to your assessment, what you have to do is click somewhere in the table of contents. Can you see there is a small option called update table? Click update table. Click the option called update entire table. Then press OK. Now you can see mobile banking is in the page number 5, 6, 7 because the conclusion references again jump to another new pages. So this is how you have to do. Again, if I want to show you, click somewhere. Don't click anywhere in the outside of the table of contents. It doesn't come up anything. If you click somewhere inside the table of contents, if you click the update table, then click the update entire table. If you do any changes after you insert in your table of contents. So this is actually a very simple format that any student can do whenever you do your assessment or even your master's dissertation, thesis. However, if you want to do some, uh, some of the like a bit of a detailed table of contents, I'll show that one in the next video, how to make the table of figures or maybe with the Roman numbers. So very detailed table of contents usually used by the doctorate students. Actually, I'll show that one in the next video. So for now, I hope this will be a useful actually uh, video for a lot of students out there. So until I see you with a new video, have a good time and goodbye for all of you.